Hey, it's Jesse. I'm here at my studio in Philadelphia and take a look at some of the sounds he used in tar pits. This keyboard in the middle here is what we used for the lead sound. It is a Roland Juno 60. It's a pretty classic 80s synth and in some ways really simple but um, yeah, I think it's it really can lead to some nice nice sounds um, it's definitely known more for chords and pads but we used it here for the lead sound this is the tube tape echo that we used to reamp the Juno lead sound um, tube tape echo is a tape based um, delay echo machine it's based on the Echoplex. Um, it's pretty simple. You've got, um, here's your dry. Um, everything's labeled guitar because I think it was originally designed for guitar, but it's really great for anything. Um, this is the how wet the echo would be. This is how many echoes there are. This is like the tone of the echo, and this is the input. So we really use this to drive the sound quite a bit. Um, hear that in just a second. So this is a reel of tape. This is a record head, a playback head, and just the distance between the two is what sets the tape time or the delay time. Um, you can change the speed up here, but um, most of the time running it on high speed. Um, this is the capstan. So this the motor is turning this, and this is the pinch roller, and this is actually engaged by uh, moving this lever. So when you plug in the output here, it engages the lever. So here's with the, I've got the lead sound running right there. And when you start to turn up this input on the echo, You can really hear how that overdrives that sound. So we were definitely leaning on that to give it more grit, bring out some harmonics in the upper mid range. So here's with a lot of delay, but as you can hear when I move this in real time, you get these pitch bends and cool artifacts and that's really what led to the lead sound here as we're reamping it. I'm moving this after each little phrase to get these weird dive bombs and pitch tweaks that make you feel like you're uh, bending space time a little bit. So that is the tube tape echo, um, definitely one of my go-to pieces of gear in the studio for um, all things dub, but also if you just want to get weird and overdrive something. The final piece of the lead sound was to run this reamped tube tape echo sound through a Leslie cabinet. A uh, Leslie cabinet typically associated with an organ, it's a really big cabinet with speakers that actually turn so you typically mic up two sides of the top and the bottom drum and it turns and gives this really cool stereo sound and you can think of that shimmering organ sound is really made by a Leslie cabinet so it's really great to run other things through it to get these nice lush chorus sounds and to widen a stereo image so here is the lead sound by itself. Here's the lead sound with the tube tape added in. And then here's with the Leslie added in. Here's the Leslie just by itself. And you can hear all the stereo motion that adds as it moves from left to right. We typically are changing the speed of that um, the Leslie in real time too just to give extra dynamics so um, all together the 
lead sounds like this. For the bass sound on tar pits, I used what I use on stage, my uh, Minotaur bass synth, um, part of my modular system. It's um, It has chips based on the Taurus, which you may have seen. It looks like a organ foot pedal, old um, bass synth from the 70s, but this is obviously a much smaller version but the chips are voiced for bass, so it's, it's definitely really prime for um, bass sounds. Um, for this sound, one of the things that does make it unique is using two oscillators, one here on the primary pitch, and then a second here that is a fifth above. So you, that's where you're getting that really thick sound of, um, of those two oscillators working together. And then otherwise, it's a pretty simple patch. The, the one thing about the Minotaur is it only has one LFO. So that can be a little bit of a challenge if you want to use it for different things. But for this one, I was doing some tweaks to the oscillator. So you get some kind of interesting pitch bends as the song goes on. I think probably running at a slow speed like this and then just a few little tweaks like that will um, attenuate the LFO to the oscillators and get these either the pitch moving either up or down. We also did a little bit of reamping through the H3000 Eventide Alter Harmonizer. It's a really great 80s effects unit and for producers who've ever used any sound toys gear, a lot of the algorithms are based on things that were in the H3000, uh, micro shift, the crystallizer, things like that. Um, this is one of my go-to things to get weird sounds and to get some stereo spread. So on the bass, there's just a little bit added in, but it helps with the stereo image. And for one of the breakdowns, we reamped through the Memory Man, which is my favorite bucket brigade analog delay. Um, it's pretty subtle, but there's just a, a break to the bass that goes to this um, slightly more chorus sound, and that was made with the Memory Man. Thanks for nerding out on some synth sounds with me. I'll be back to Talk about more sounds later, maybe break down the old modular rig that I've been using on stage last year. Take care.